Alright, hello everyone and welcome back to Kotobo Space Program, where today we are having a look at yet another fun mod, this time in the form of the Endurance Space Exploration System being made by a wonderful little team of people on the forums, and this, oh my god, this thing is amazing. I love the movie Interstellar, amazing sci-fi movie, and the ship in it is just so cool. And I knew it was only a matter of time before a group of people actually got together to make it properly in Kerbal Space Program. And thus we have this mod, which adds into the game a variety of parts for you yourself to build a Kerbalized version of the Endurance spaceship in the game which just makes me happy. So let's head into the VAB and take a look at all the parts. Now they're kind of scattered about oddly. Uh, normally whenever we put in mods, they're either up at the top or up at the bottom. These seem to have scattered themselves all around. So I went ahead and made my own endurance subgrouping here. Hopefully I got all the parts and I'm not missing anything, uh, but I'm pretty sure I got all the bits in here. Surprisingly few honestly, uh, but that's mainly due to the fact that the largest part of the entire ship, the structural ring, is one gigantic piece. Oh my god, look at this thing. It's glorious. It is just simply glorious. And each of these little straight bits here is where you attach on all the various little sections. You hook docking ports onto here, and it is just a glorious piece of modeling. I mean, just look at it, it's beautiful. You got all the little, like, cupolas all around the ring. It's it's great. I love this model to death. And the uh, structural ring itself is, of course, a command pod, which is unmanned. And it has a very, very powerful reaction wheel, SAS. Oop, whoop, last that thing. Electrical charge and, of course, also holds a lot of monopropellant. Now, along the sides of the ring, as I mentioned, we have all the different bits and bobs that connect to it. The first here being the DSPS 300 fuel assembly, which is a generator, has RCS thruster power and liquid fuel and oxidizer. And these babies just clip on to either, whoop, no, let's, uh, whoop. Hold on, let me get this right. There we go. Click onto the side of the ring just like so. Kind of clips through it, but that is intentional. The connection point is actually inside of this thing here, which is quite cool. I really like how they did that. Uh, we then have the EC200 crew cabin, which holds four crew members. And uh, it does have an IVA. Sadly, though, the IVA is just that of the regular command, or not command pod, but the regular sort of hitchhiker's tank, or, well, I gave you the part, the hitchhiker part. Hitchhiker module, there's a good word. <laughs> and yes, it holds four crew in there, and just uses resources holding Kerbals. Lovely. We then have the EC200B command module, which requires one crew minimum, two maximum, and it uses the same uh, interior as the Mark I, or no, no, not the Mark I lander can. Ah, uh, there it is, the Mark II lander can. It uses the same interior right now as the Mark II lander can. Hopefully, they uh, add in a unique one eventually, which would be nice. And let's just click that thing on. There we go. Beautiful. We then have the EC215 logistics module, which holds a whole lot of electrical charge and monopropellant because, well, quite frankly, you're going to need a lot of both on this thing. Oh my god, the, these engines, since they have the RCS built into them, uh, they, they, they use quite a bit of RCS power to actually move this thing. 1.2729 per second. And because of how large this whole ship is, it, it takes a lot to move. So you'll definitely need some of these logistic modules on here. And let's just click that on. And then the last bit for going around the ring, we have the habitat assessment unit which is a uh, science bay designed to work for the Endurance Space Exploration System. And this is more of like an attachment that you put onto other things. So if we just like shove it there for now, works, it fits. And actually I'd probably go better back here. Very nice, very nice indeed. And that will hold scientific experiments. Lovely. And yeah, that's basically the ring and all the modules that click onto. Oh no, actually one more piece. Another part about this fuel assembly 
is the fuel assembly module also has this internal space which you can use to pop on the engine. There we go, we have the lovely Endurance Deep Space engine which has 650 thrust, 800 engine ISP, and notice that it's, uh, you know, quite a lot of liquid fuel, oxidizer, and a whole lot of electrical charge, and it's, it's beautiful. It, it is a glorious engine, extraordinarily powerful, just fits right on in there. And also we have these little internal bits as well, which you can put these different science modules into, if I can actually... Oh, with my... Oh, there we go. We put it, put it into that one. <laughs> kind of off kilter, but oh well, it is there. And uh, I'm hoping, I'm hoping in the future that maybe they add in more little modules to hook into these. I think it'd be quite cool to have a variety of things for it. That would be very nice. But yes, put together and you sort of alternate these around the ring and it does look gorgeous and very, very fitting for the actual ship in the movie. Now the next part we have is the lander, and the lander is an interesting beast. It is made up of, let's, oh god, what would be a good way to pop this on? I know, we'll do this, just hook it right there, and that is a glorious, a glorious little lander. It of course does also serve as a command pod, and it holds a crew of four, and the intention of this is, well, a lander, to uh, leave the ship and then land on a planet. And the fun part is assembling this whole ship in space. We'll get to that in a little bit out of these landers, etc. And the lander itself, a uh, you know, typical command pod, it does have a custom internal view, which is very cool. Quite a nice little powerful engine, 450 max thrust, 3450 ISP. And burns quite, oh, oh, whoops, I accidentally clicked off. There we go. Burns quite a bit of liquid fuel and oxidizer and uh, does produce some good electrical charge. Very good. It does have its own internal generator, 100 per tick. Very nice. It has a lift rating since it is meant to be a lander and also, of course, then subsequently, hopefully, take off from the surface of a, sh of a planet. Uh, it has a reaction wheel. Very nice. SAS, electrical charge, its own internal liquid fuel oxidizer and monoprocess propellant it is a self-contained ship all on its own now the problem it needs engines it needs these lander lift engines which you just click on to hold on let's rotate this baby there we go you click on to each of the four little uh, engine bits there now its rear engines are already sort of built in uh, if you can kind of see if we raise this whole thing up a bit there they are, very lovely, glorious little engines. And of course, we can do thrust limiting here, all the liquid fuel, oxidizer, etc. And uh, yeah, you just add on these extra lift engines because it is a VTOL, and you're, you're good to go. It's very nice, very nice indeed. Now the far more complicated one is the Ranger, single stage to orbit body. Now this is a, another lander for the ship, and uh, oh boy, this, there we go, click it onto there. Very beautiful, nice, sleek, single stage to orbit craft. It is designed as basically a little shuttle to ferry people back and forth. It also does have an internal view, uh, but it's, it's, oh boy, it's, it's an interesting craft because this one, unlike the lander, actually requires a crap load of parts. We have the rear Ranger aerodynamic surface, which if we click on there, we have the forward left gear, which I'll just kind of randomly click there. Oh, very, very wonky. We then have a right gear that does the same on the other side. We then have the Ranger front RCS, which clicks there. The Ranger lift engine for single stage to orbit, which actually goes where I attached it to the ring. Uh, but that is a little engine you just click onto the main body. Now uh, we then have the Ranger rear left engine and also a right engine. <laughs> we have more, folks. We have a lot more. We have the Ranger middle RCS, which goes in this uh, middle bit here. There we go. They fit right on either side. It's into one piece. We then have the Ranger rear RCS. So many parts which fit into the back. Oh, God. I th oh, no. I think I'm supposed to be down here. Hold on. Hold on. 
<laughs> this takes a bit. I had to assemble this on my own earlier. It was hell. I'm just gonna click it in randomly, but that's the rear RCS, and then we have the rear landing gears, which both fit into... Oh god, let's grab it. These little slots here, which I accidentally put the rear RCS into, but you have to put one landing gear on each side, and it's... It's fun and painful to put together, but my god, when it is put together, it is glorious. And thankfully, though, the mod itself does, in fact, come with these pre-assembled to maintain your sanity. So let's take a look at the fully assembled Endurance, which, of course, is the main ring with all of the little bits. And actually, I mentioned earlier that I'm hoping they add in more of these modules to the back. Right now, we've just got it full of science modules. And actually, I, I, I don't have full confirmation on this, but I do believe they are hoping to do more with these because the lander, one of the coming soon features is the ability to uh, carry cargo modules. So hopefully we get more than just the science module down the road because, uh, you know, maybe some habitat modules to put on the planetary surface so you can actually use this baby to colonize. But yes, look at it. It is glorious. Just a giant endurance ship. Then we also have, if we go to the space plan hangar bit, the fully built lander, which is far, far easier. So, so easy to put together. Now, of course, it has attached onto it some docking ports, some RCS. Uh, but the only parts from the mod are the main body itself and these little lift rockets making a glorious little lander. And then, oh boy, my favorite, favorite thing that they added in, the fully built Ranger stock. That is what it looks like when fully, properly assembled. Oh god, so many pieces to go into this thing. And here you'll see that little lift engine we talked about, the small little landing gears in the back. Uh, the rear engines, rear RCS, middle RCS, front RCS, uh, these landing gears, it's just, oh god, so many pieces, so many pieces to make it, but it's gorgeous, and I love it. Uh, so, if we actually exit out of here, I spent the last hour getting all of these into space so that we could actually have a fully assembled endurance, which, wow, I haven't even gone to the tracking center yet on this new save file. So if we go to here, I've got a crap load of Kerbals in space, and as I said, a fully assembled, oh god, endurance with two landers. Here we are. The full ring, two landers, and a ranger in the front. We actually could have fit another ranger in the bottom one. I, it took me forever to realize that these little angled docking ports are specifically for the ranger because the ranger does have a uh, sort of slanted rear where its docking port is. And so you end up having to go to these uh, top and bottom ports so you don't have the ranger sitting off at an angle. It took me far longer than I'd like to admit to actually uh, figure that one out. But yes, we have this just gorgeous looking ship. I mean, it is absolutely beautiful and looks so, so much the part from the Interstellar movie. It is very cool, very beautiful. I love how it all fits together very nicely. We probably could have fit uh, another few things on here with that docking port. I think they included, yes, another docking port back here, and it's just... Well, quite frankly, it's glorious. I love the design of this thing. And as I said, we do have internal views of uh, these. So if we bring back this and oh God, well, the uh, crew habitat modules on these, as I said, they just use the typical habitat module interior, which isn't anything special, but hey, it is there. So we have something. Uh, we then have, oh God, to find people. As I said, the command module for this uses the Mark II lander can interior. Nothing's great, but hopefully they add their own interior in the future. That would be glorious. Uh, we then have, I believe these guys are in the Ranger. So if we go to Danfield, yes, he is in the Ranger. Uh, or not the Ranger, the Lander. We've got these lovely front windows. The bottom is also glass as well as the top. It does have built-in support for the uh, raster prop monitor. I do not have that installed, but if you did, you would see lovely glass cockpit panels right here. But uh, as I don't have it installed, we have blankness, just absolute blankness, and a lovely, lovely set of crewmen in here. If we head back out and take a look at one of the guys in the rear, 
Ah, yes, there we go. We've got everyone inside. A nice, spacious interior cabin for one of these landers. Very cool indeed. I love the detail put into it. Very nice. I like how they didn't try to go too realistic. They definitely kerbalized this whole thing, which, you know, actually makes it feel like it fits in this game. And then lastly, we have uh, these guys in the Ranger, which is similar in style to the Lander's cockpit, but a bit more flat. No uh, floor glass panels that we can see through. Uh, we do have the nice ceiling ones, though. A nice good bit of visibility compared to the Lander's. They have much smaller windows in the front. These are much larger. So you have a lot more good visibility all around you, and it is just glorious. Let's go to the one of the guys in the back. There we go. Nice, spacious interior. We can see the ring outside, and it's just great. I I love this thing. It is just so beautiful. And let's actually charge up the engines, because these are very, very powerful engines. And oh god, I didn't mean to turn on those. Hold on, throttle down. <laughs> let's turn this back on real quick. Uh, shut down engines. <laughs> shut down engines. Oh god, I've got to do it individually for these. That, that wasn't good. I almost ripped apart this entire thing. Oh god, there we go. All those engines are shut down, so we should just be able to throttle up. These are wobbling a bit much for my like- Oh god, there's the- oh, the lander engines. <laughs> I forgot they have engines on the bottom. Oh god, so many, so many things I forgot to shut down. <laughs> Oh, uh, well, that could have gone much better. I, I wasn't I was hoping I wouldn't rip this whole thing apart, but that may be asking much from me. Let's turn off all of these and actually go and use this full on interstellar engine real quick because, well, it is a glorious and powerful engine. So there we go. We should just have the four interstellar drives. And uh, look at it. it is just gorgeous. We are pulling away from the planet slowly but surely, and we are at a very, very wonky position. How is our orbit actually going? Quite nicely. Quite nicely indeed, and we actually count as a space station. <laughs> I like it. I like it. But yeah, we're uh, growing a nice apoapsis there. Very good indeed. Yes, these engines are just beautiful. I absolutely love them. I love this entire ship design. It is simply gorgeous and being a fan of the interstellar movie i love it so if you would like to go and check this out for yourself you can just take a look at the description on the video and uh there you will find the download link and uh yeah i hope you do go and check this out because well again i can't say it enough times this thing is gorgeous and you should go and play around with it go colonize other planets with this baby hopefully once they add in the cargo capacity for the landers you can actually take these down to Duna, etc., and build bases. That'll be wonderful. Let me ask, I hope you have enjoyed this video, and of course, you come back for the next. But until then, thank you for watching, my friends, and as always, have a good one.